So the first data type that we're going to look at are the locations. So you can see in that demo data that we have two locations, one for Ithaca and one for Geneva. So to check to see if your locations are already in the database, what you would do is go to Manage and Locations. And I need to log in first. And here you have a table of the locations that are in the database. And below that, a map of all the locations as well. So you can search for your locations either in the table or on the map. So I can search for Ithaca. You can see that we have Ithaca, New York in the database already. And if I search for Geneva, I see that there's no matching records found, which means that I have to first add Geneva to the database before I can add a trial for, for that location. And this is the format the that the location template um, has. So you can see here, um, this is the entire template that I need since I only am, I'm only adding one location in this instance, but you can add multiple locations with the one upload template. So this describes each of the columns that are required. So for the name, we wanna have the town and state for the location. The abbreviation is a code that's used to identify the location. And for the T3 databases, our convention is to use the first three letters of the town name followed by the two letters of the state. So for, for Geneva, New York, we'd have the abbreviation Jenny. The country code is the ISO standardized three letter country code. So there's a link here if you need to look that up. For the United States, it's easy, it's just USA country name, United States of America. The program is the breeding program name for the uh, breeding program that uses this location. So you can have multiple breeding programs associated with a single location. For this one, we're just associating it with the Cornell breeding program. And you can find the breeding program names by going to manage and then breeding program. So you can see how the, the names are formatted. So that way they can, can match the existing breeding programs here. After that, we have a column called type and that describes the type of the location. So you can differentiate between field locations and greenhouses, or if you have a lab or a storage location that you wanna to add to the database as well. So this is a field location. And then we have its location um, coordinates. So we have latitude and longitude and decimal degrees here. And it's important to note that for the Western Hemisphere, you wanna make sure you have that negative in front of the longitude, otherwise you end up in Asia. And then the altitude is the elevation of the location. And then this NOAA station ID is used if you wanna get weather, historical weather data for that location. So there's a link here that can be used to search for the closest NOAA weather station to your location. If you can't find it or if you don't wanna have the weather data, um, you can just add the word none in that column. So I'm gonna download the location template that I have with this information filled out for Geneva. And then to add that, location to the database, you go back to the manage locations page. And then there's an upload new locations link in the top right corner over here. Um, and on each of the upload um, links, there's more information about the required column headers listed here with their descriptions as well. So I choose the location template and upload it, and Geneva has been added to the database. So you can see that Geneva is here with all the information from that, from that Excel template. So you can use this to add multiple locations at once. If you only have one location, what you can do is find the location on the map, and then just click the location on the map and add location and you can fill out the information in a form right here. 
So this is a good way to do a single location and it already fills in the latitude and longitude for that position. One thing that I want to mention is, you know, if you have a lot of locations that you want to add, it can be a little difficult to look up the latitude, longitude, elevation, and this NOAA station ID. So if you're using R to manage or extract your data, um, I've been working on creating a breed-based R package, and there's a link for that here. And there are some helper functions in that package that can be used to look up the latitude, longitude, and elevation. So there's this geocode location function that can take a, a street address and it can uh, query an API to get the lat, long, and um, altitude for that location. And then there's another helper function that can be used to get the uh, closest NOAA station ID. So if you're comfortable using R, if you're already using R to manage some of your data, we can use these helper functions to, to help get some of that information. Uh, so are there any questions on locations? It should be fairly straightforward. Uh, David, there's a question from Karen Bobian about, um, I don't see lat long in barley, is that coming? Yeah, so we should already have. And can, can locations be edited once they're in? Yes, they can be edited. And we should already have lats and longs for barley. If not, we'll get that soon. But yeah, it looks like for barley, we have positions for, for our locations. And then for editing uh, locations, I believe if you have to, you can just upload a template again and it will overwrite the properties, or you can find it on the map if you just have a single position that you want to uh, modify. And then there's an edit option here, which will allow you to edit the properties for that position. Jessica asks if there's a functional difference between farms and fields. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not sure why both of those are in there. Uh, so I think by convention for us, we've been using fields. Sorry, the Zoom toolbar is over my tabs. Um, let's see. Uh, so, so we have some farms and fields. So we're not really um, making a distinction between the two. And Shitaye asks if, the, if it's the testing location or the location of the breeding program, it should be the location of the, the, the actual field experiment. Right, yes. And in the past, we've just used the location of the closest town for a lot of these, but these can get very specific. You can have you know, different locations for each field in, you know, in a, in a testing location, if you wanted to get that specific and you had accurate enough GPS coordinates for it. Right. So Mark Sorrells asks, I have 15 locations near Ithaca. I guess in theory, they would all be Ithaca at some level, but they have different field names. Uh, if you, they should have unique latitude and longitudes, and I guess it would be, uh, I mean, yeah, it ends up being tricky to get a, get a good abbreviation. Right. You might, um, so so I, I, I suppose, does the abbreviation, is it forced to have five letters? No, so we could use the same five letter code for Ithaca and then add another abbreviation after that for the actual field location. Okay. Yeah, so I think in the past for a lot of the, the Cornell trials, we just have Ithaca as the location, but going forward, we could get much more specific and have separate locations for each field. So this is the kind of situation that's perfect for clicking the feedback button or the contact us button and we'll sort it out. Yeah, definitely. 